Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. January. It's here. It's here. We have the lineup. We've started. It's year seven. Season seven. Can you, I, I just, it just, it just kills me. I can't even think about it when I, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't either. And uh, to those of you that have been listening since the beginning, thank you. I know we got a lot of OG listeners. And if you're new to the show, we got a lot of new people too. Welcome. I'm glad you, I, I'm glad you said that. Cause that's exactly where I want to go with this. Um, we have two special guests, uh, this episode and next, we're going to split it into two. We had uh, Brad Parker and Corey Smith, uh, the festival director and marketing director of mm -hmm. Bonnaroo and a whole bunch of other festivals, Moon River, in, 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 as among them, which is our local festival. But um, so if you're new, uh, to Russ's point, if you are new, uh, I, I kind of feel like we need to sort of set the table here a little bit, um, almost every time. Cause one of the points that Brad makes in our conversation or Corey, I think it was actually, is that more than 50% of Bonnaroo attendees are first timers. Yeah. That's fascinating. I had no idea. Isn't it? In our world, we think everybody's been there a hundred times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just, that's, how we think. And, um, that's not the case. So that means that probably, you know, that many are finding us, uh, for the first time as well. And they're probably looking in thinking, who are these two old guys and why are they talking about Bonnaroo? You know, the, what, what do they have to offer? And so as way of introduction, uh, again, I, I'm Barry. Um, I spent almost, uh, 37 years, writing uh, entertainment music stories for the Chattanooga Times Free Press. That's Lord Taco. He is an actual lord. Uh, he has papers to prove it. I have papers. <laughs> <laughs> he has papers. Um, we met uh, through our mutual friend, Brad Steiner, who I co-created this podcast with. And uh, one crazy uh, lunch uh, time, about three months before 2018 Bonnaroo, I said we should do uh, we should do a uh, something live Facebook live if if you remember that crazy thing, mm -hmm. and I mean his eyes lit up and uh, I think that was like a Thursday and by Friday he had contacted you because he knows you're really really good with computers and web pages and and all that sort of stuff so yeah he had a he had a web page designed a name uh, a show he had it all. And we thought for three months leading up to the 2018 uh, Bonnaroo that we would do a podcast for three months. And uh, here we are seven <laughs> seasons later, right? Still I mean, here. I, did I leave anything out? No, you pretty much nailed it. Yeah, I remember um, I didn't know you at the time, uh, but mm -hmm. Brad, you know, through Brad, he just said uh, he hit me up, I think, at dinner one day. He bought me a beer and said, uh, can you get us a website and a domain and you know, a podcast. And I said, sure. And also shout out to Nikki T, Nick Turner, who designed uh, the logo, Absolutely. did did all the design. And uh, so it wasn't all me, you know, we had a few people come together on this, but. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Nikki T, uh, he did, uh, you'll, if you've heard of Camp Nut Butter, he did, uh, he did a lot of that. Uh, the the giant heads that we have, mm -hmm. if you've been to Bonnaroo and you've ever been back in the area and seen camp nut butter that's us you've heard about it uh which is again part of the the reason why this thing is so special is we actually have a camp that we've created and yeah picket fence and a uh, name and a marquee and um and that's that's really sort of the theme uh, of this show and the theme going forward is the the reason the reason we well first of all we thought it would last three months and that would be it that was but the entire the reason, timeline yeah no. <laughs> correct but the reason we thought it was a good idea is because we realized that we were talking about Bonnaroo almost every week mm -hmm. every time we had lunch together we were talking about Bonnaroo in this community and uh, so we started this podcast and then 
figured out pretty quickly um, that there is an entire community. Uh, I used to joke, if you remember when we first started, that we were big in Korea, North <laughs> Korea, because we could see the analytics. Yeah. And uh, we had listeners in in North Korea, and I'm sure it was a bot, but whatever. I thought it was still funny because it was it, it wasn't a sig- it wasn't one. It was several. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which was so stupid. Um, but we figured out pretty quickly that there is an entire community uh, that is a, as obsessed with this festival as we are. And you are going to hear Brad uh, Parker in particular uh, and Corey talk about that exact same thing. Uh, we, we had about, what, 90 minutes with them? Yeah, it was over an hour Pretty total. They, they spent a yeah. lot of time with us. Pretty close. And the, the first half is sort of just that. It's us, uh, them, talking about how they fell in love with this festival like we did. They were not. Um, it's funny how many lives have been changed by this festival. And, and that's, I think, a huge part of this conversation. Ours, yours and mine. Um, no, no question about it. Oh um, yeah, it's definitely changed mine. I mean, yeah, you, you I and mean, Brad, and even Brian Stone combined probably have a whole lot of experience going to Bonnaroo because you all have been to nearly every single one. I had never been before 2018, which is crazy because uh, it seems like I should have been going this whole time. We're so close right. here in Chattanooga. Plus, I've got the bus. You know, I've had the bus for 20 years, and that's right. what everyone says. That oh, I bet you take this to Bonnaroo, and my answer has always been no. And then it became well, why not? So this was my opportunity to uh, get involved with y'all and uh, actually go to Bonnaroo. So I've been going ever since 2018. And have a whole new group of, uh, I mean, more than friends. Yeah. Uh, There's people I talk to every day now because of Bonnaroo. Yep. And uh, Brad and Corey, again, he is the, Brad is the director of the festival and uh, Corey is the marketing director. Uh, They didn't have those careers 10 years ago. No, (laughs) they were just fans who ended up at Bonnaroo and like us fell in love with it and, and figured out a way to make a career out of it. I mean, I I don't think, I don't think I can emphasize that enough. You know, that doesn't Um, happen with a lot of fields, you know? (laughs) No. And Yvonne, who we had on a couple of three weeks ago is now a photographer working festivals because of Bonnaroo, our friend David Bruce, um, you know, who hadn't, he didn't change his career, but he's been going since what, 11? Mm-hmm. I get it wrong. It's um, uh, been going for quite a while. 11 or 12, because he had his 10 year, his 10 year anniversary would have been either one of the ones that got canceled. Right. I think 2020. I don't know. But and yeah, it's a your friend point. of ours. Mm-hmm. He, as, as I've said, been to my house. Yeah, that's that's sort of the line for me, you know. If they've been I know to your people, house, but if you've been to my house, mm-hmm. <laughs> it means a little something special. Yeah, and 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 and, and that one does. But uh, so uh, you have edited the episodes. You've got them both broken down. So I I have my sort of uh, talking points. But what what stood out? I mean, I know what stood out when we were talking to those guys, but now that you've gone back through, is mm-hmm. there, were there key points that uh, jumped out at you? Yeah, like you said, I mean, they both started Bonnaroo as fans, and then this ended up being their career. And of course, through AC Entertainment and C3, they work on a lot of festivals all over the country. Um, but they both emphasize how, how different and unique and special Bonnaroo is to them, and that it's almost, you know... They, they manage it differently because they understand that it's a lot of uh, fan first type uh, programming, and you know there's things they can do at Bonnaroo that they can't do at other festivals, and that yeah. was that stuck out to me. That's a great point, and and um, also want to to give a shout out to the real robust guys, uh, Daniel and Sharla. Also interviewed uh, Brad and Corey the day after we did. Uh, and took it a little bit different. Uh, they went a little deeper as they should have, and I'm glad they did into the camping yeah. experience. Uh, you and I sort of come at it from the media 
area backstage kind of thing and they they spend more time out in in the camping area and and spend a lot of time on that um it's a really really good interview uh, brad and Corey again give yes a whole yeah. lot more information definitely deeper. yeah complimentary to ours i would say you can listen yeah, to good word. uh both both shows and get a, a pretty good picture yeah but you're going to find the same thing you're going to find it's it's about community you're mm-hmm. going to find that it's different it is completely different um but one of the things to your point which, which you were mentioning is they really do listen they read all the reddits they read all the emails they read the good the bad mm-hmm. and they react to it they and do we have said that from the beginning uh, even before those guys were involved, I could tell, I can tell you, um, as a, you know, someone who went that very first day, uh, and has been going every day, every year since 07, they listen, um, they know it's hot. They know we need bathrooms. They know we need grass. We, they know we need shade. They know we want, you know, tame Impala and they know we <laughs> want this band and that band and they know we need water. That's right. Um, they listen and it doesn't happen overnight. And, and that was one of the things you'll hear Brad say, you know, it takes time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, they, it takes money. Um, that was another thing you'll hear that, um, you know, it, it just, they listen. And I think that is so key. They um, do. They're not just sitting in an office thousands of miles away. No idea what's, what it's like. Um, making decisions they you know they're in right. what nashville and knoxville yeah those two are uh live nation c3 i think is in texas austin so mm-hmm. they're spread all over the country uh they do you know these are the big boys these are the guys who put on the serious festivals um so we're lucky to have them um the other thing i wanted to emphasize if if you're new um we have an entire catalog of past shows uh, that Russ has done an unbelievably great job of organizing. <laughs> and I would recommend you go back and listen because they're not, uh, to me, they're evergreen, right? We've had oh, yeah. Brad and Corey on. We had them on last year. Uh, and and we've had Ashley Caps. We've had uh, Rick Farman. Um, we've had Jeff Quayar. We've had all these people who helped put these events on. And they, they go, we love the sausage making. That's what this show is <laughs> designed of, about is. And so we do. And I've, I've tried to make it easy to go back and find all that because it's broken down by year, uh, by topic, by guest. I mean, you can look it up. You can just search for whatever and, and hopefully find it. So we have a yeah. large catalog and it's kind of hard to manage, but hopefully we can. And we do occasionally we'll pull out clips from old episodes and put them out as a, a high five. You might have heard some of right. those. If it's a week where we don't have a lot to talk about. Yeah. High five clips. Is, but, you know, it's about a five minute, uh, five to eight minute, ten, maybe 10 minute uh, clip of something that we hope will entice you to go back and listen. But my point is they're they're evergreen They're mm-hmm. I don't think they're dated. There are a lot of band interviews. Um, but we've we've brad mentions uh brian benson and uh stephen green steve green those are the guys that book these acts Mm -hmm. they've been on our show a couple of times and uh if you're interested in why uh they book so and so and not so and so you know it's so funny uh i've told people many times i at moon river I had a couple of shots of uh, bourbon that were a little stronger than I than <laughs> I knew, and the next thing I know, I'm hugging up to Brian Benson, telling him he needs to book Dolly. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> like he he's never heard like, that. Yeah, he looks at me like yeah. seriously, yeah. <laughs> seriously. You don't think I thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not one of my finer moments. <laughs> but point being, uh, they talk about that. Uh, uh, several times and you know how that happens uh it's not just uh you know walk into a store or walk online and say i want this one and that one and that one you know there it's a complicated formula and probably 
probably, Russ, if we've done nothing else with this show, I think we've helped explain to people through interviews with guys like that, not us necessarily, the process, you know. It's a good point. The fact that um, they work very hard to build a lineup with lanes, as they call it. You know, if you're a fan of X, Y, Z, what else will keep your interest for right. four days while you camp in hot, sweaty, muggy, miserable <laughs> Middle <laughs> Tennessee in June? Exactly. If you bought a ticket based on your favorite band is playing, you know, Sunday, what are you going to do the other three days while you're there? And that's a good point. Right. They they try to curate that experience based on your musical taste. I think I think that is probably in the top three or four things that we have learned mm-hmm. in doing this. The other is uh, the Bonnaroo Code, the Bonnaroo Community, um, you know, Radiate Positivity. It's real. Uh, I think you and I, you know, I know I have. I, re- I remember leaving there after the first year thinking, why can't it be like this all the time? Why can't Same people thing. just be kind, you know? Just yeah. do the right thing and be kind. And for me, those are some of my favorite episodes when we just talk to people like you and me that are fans and that are in the community. And, you know, like we've had Cassie on a few weeks ago and uh, a bunch of people have been on the show that aren't necessarily in the business or, you know, a music performer, but they're very much just as part of Bonnaroo as any of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just be kind, you yeah. know, be who you want to mm-hmm. be. Be whatever you want to be. Uh, we get to do that for those four or five days, six days now. Um, and it's a great lesson that we all, you know, can take with us, I hope. Um, but anyway. Um, all right. So I think um, I'm so excited. We kicked off season seven with the lineup. Yep. Obviously, you know, Post Malone, Red Hot Chili Peppers, everybody should know by now. If you're listening, you know. I you mean, know. there's yeah. nothing new, no news there. No, we started uh, with uh, our initial reactions, and then we did a live show with uh, Brad and Corey, and then this this is going to be the next couple episodes, So, uh, which is another right. point. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that is a, kind of a companion to the podcast. If you haven't come over and subscribed, we do live streams, and we do videos uh, a lot of times. Um, so... You know, please check it out. Yep. And so along those lines, this is the kicks off the season. We, we mm-hmm. are probably going to do, we're not probably, we're going to have something every week, whether it's a high five clip or a new, uh, a new interview, we're going to interview uh, fans. Uh, we're going to interview artists. We're going to interview as many people as we can that are the behind the scenes, uh, the sausage makers, as we call them, because that's what I like doing. <laughs> I like I yeah. like asking how you build a stage in a week, you know, how you get sewer and water and all, all of that on a 700 acre farm for a week. Uh, that, that stuff fascinates me. I know. And, you know, for a long time, there was nothing out there. It's just a 700 <laughs> acres of nothing field. <laughs> and they had to bring all this in. That's exactly right. And that's what we love. So, yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, anything else? I, 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 I really, I'd ask you if there were other, uh, uh, things from the interview that really jumped out at you. Um, you just, I guess everybody will just have to listen. Like I said, the first part is mostly, uh, Russ and I asking them and getting sort of their, um, story, how they ended up where they are. And then the second half is a little bit more, uh, in depth about this particular, uh, and some of the changes, uh, some yeah. of the camping, the a la carte sort of camping changes. And, um, so it's a, it's a pretty wide, wide ranging, uh, interview. Those guys are great. They were so nice to give us as much time as they did. And, uh, I always love talking to those two. Uh, yeah. And I think they like coming on and talking to us. Yeah, I know they do. And it's, again they're just they're us <laughs> they're just fans that <laughs> yeah. uh, it's so funny to to think about that and and, and again going back to Yvonne uh, and and those guys 
you know, this was not a career path that they they had lined up, kind of. Uh, Corey a little bit more. I mean, he's been a, he's a musician, but uh, um, you know, it's just interesting how this festival has impacted so many lives. So and true. I think you get that from these two interviews. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoy it because I sure did. All right. All right. As promised, guys, we're back. This is the What Podcast. I'm Barry. This is Lord Taco. As promised, we have Brad and Corey from C3 Presents to talk about Man, what are we going to talk about? Uh, we're going to talk about the changes last year. We're going to talk about the changes this year. We're going to talk about this year's lineup. We're going to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. First of all, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank, thanks for having, for having us. us. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to do this first. Well, let's do this first. Uh, Brad, what is your role, please, with uh, C3? My name is Brad Parker, and I'm the festival director of Bonnaroo. When you do other festivals, also, right? Because we want to get, I want to get into that a little bit with with C3. Yeah, so uh, my role kind of changes depending upon the show. So I have a few shows I work on that I'm the festival director, and then there are some projects where I'm more of uh, in support roles as like a project manager. So it it kind of depends upon you know we've got over thirty festivals in our portfolio, so. We wow. definitely have players that, that change, you know, that are chameleons a little bit and have to switch roles depending upon the project. But um, for most of the, what some that are listening may know as the AC Entertainment Festivals, uh, I serve as the festival director of Moon River in Chattanooga, High Water in Charleston, South Carolina, Bonnaroo, um, and, a, and a few others. But that's my role. Thank you. I wanted to, I wanted to get that from you because I want to, I want to ask a little compare and contrast kind of thing later on, uh, if, if I yeah. if I remember. All right, Corey, what is, what is your role, please? Uh, I'm a marketing manager at C3. Uh, my main show is Bonnaroo, but I also work on some of the other um, formerly AC Entertainment shows like Highwater, Railbird, uh, Moon River, um, and then you can go ahead and tease. We might have a couple more coming this year. We'll see. Right. Um, but. Yeah, that's and then Bonner is kind of a weird one. Um, you know, me and Brad, another handful of people are kind of, you know, some of the the like OGs on the Bonner team. So we end up wearing a few different hats on this one, um, and just kind of get sucked into pretty much everything, uh, which is always fun. For everybody else is new, I'm Barry again. That's Lord Taco. We started this Bonneru related podcast in 2018. And you guys, uh, Russ pointed out that you guys were fans first, uh, as were we. And I think that's really important and an important thing to point out, right? I mean, you get it. It's, it's as, as Jeff used to say, it's not about dropping in, getting a big bag full of money and leaving town. It, we're, you're <laughs> kind of committed to it year round, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went for the first time in 11, I think, or 10. Um, and I haven't missed one since then. Um, yeah, and it's, it's one of those where like myself and a group of friends, like even before I started working with AC entertainment, it was kind of just one of those things that we were not going to miss, you know, and Brad, I think, I think Brad's been going even longer than I have. I missed a few years, um, in around 2011 to 13, but, uh, or 2000. 10 to 12 but my first one I went to was 2008 I was still in high school actually told my mom I was going to the Gallenberg for the weekend to go to Dollywood that was a lot and uh went went and did other things instead of going to Dollywood but uh and then my my first uh my first one working on the team was in 2013 in a in a very small role but yeah, it's important. I think Corey and I were, were fans first, and, and I think that's why we really pride ourselves in being able to have a, a finger on the pulse and, and, and understand the tone of the fan because we that's where we came from. Uh, so it's not like we're festival guys coming in saying, oh, we're experts and we know what to do with the festival. We're, we're Bonnaroo fans, and we've just been blessed with the opportunity to be able to 
be be involved at a deeper level. And so it's been really fun. Corey and I love it. Yeah, I remember just rolling up the the first night that we got there, my first year, yeah. and just like getting out of the car and grabbing a beer and looking around and being like, "This is insane." <laughs> and like, and like that that feeling like still doesn't really wear off. Like I get there, you know, a week early now, and you know, it's not it's not half filled by the time we get there. Um, and still, like that first night when you kind of wander around, you're like looking around, you're like, "This is." a very unique experience there are two great beers in life at the end of a round of golf and when you pull up and you get your camp side <laughs> yeah. started at bonnaroo tailgate beer yep yep, yep. can't yeah i can't I mean, relax no, until i until i'm parked and then i open that first beer and then it's like all right yeah. bonnaroo's on here we go what are you drinking barry uh right now no oh no, typically I mean, what's your what's your go what's your go <laughs> What's, it's a little early. <laughs> I know. I know. Russ is on the PBRs. Right? Yeah, I, I didn't I'm waiting know for that. Uh, I'm waiting for that splat. Um, hard to drink all day if you don't I start know early. You got to start early. First bottle of beer was. Uh, I usually bring a case of Bush. Yeah, which is, oh, I love that. Uh, thank like you. That. Isn't that so funny? Uh, I I, I brought a, I bring a case every year, and in, in a couple of years, um, uh, Jim Burris who's uh vp i don't remember which record label i can't even remember uh, from chicago columbia? columbia showed up at camp and i had a bush and he was like oh my god i haven't had a bush in forever can i have one and he and his son drank all my beer <laughs> 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 which was great fine with me but yeah um all right so in typical fashion this is how i work uh i had i had a, some questions but this line of questioning i want to stick with because i think it's important um one of the things i want to talk about is because i've been hearing all week and and russ the last couple of episodes we've had have been people who who have said bonnaroo changed their lives yvonne was on with us a couple of weeks ago and she's now a photographer you know working for music festivals uh, she was into photography, what, a decade or so ago, Russ? You probably remember more than I do, but. That sounds right. Now and it's what she does for a living. Y- yeah. Um, did you guys, was this your goal to be involved in music and music festivals, Brad, when you were in high school and you went to that first one? Or, or are you like the rest of us where you thought, man, this is a pretty good gig? I I think for me, um and maybe this is similar to a lot of people's stories. I I always had a very intimate relationship with the music growing up. Um, it was always like my free therapist. You know, I didn't have uh, any any time I was either sad or mad or angry or or whatever feeling I had. There was a record or a song that I went to and that really helped me channel or focus on on the energy and the emotion. And so I was really attached to the music, and I never. Um, I never thought that it was something that could be a job. I thought you had to be the guy behind the mic or you had to be the drummer or whatever to be able to work in music. And it took me a little bit of time to figure that out. I mostly was in love with lot with being in a space where that music became a, a physical, tangible thing, which was at live shows. And And then I think it was sometime in college, close to the end of college, Ashley Capps, came and spoke at a class I was in at UT in Knoxville. Oh, a- Ashley and Caps for people listening is the AC and AC entertainment co-founder along with Superfly of Bonnaroo. Just sorry to interrupt, but just to no, yeah. bring everybody up to speed. Yep. So he came and spoke at a class when I was in college and that kind of put AC on my, on my radar and, um, you know, got connected with that organization and ended up starting working there part time in 2013, and then full time in 20, beginning of 2015 or end of 2014, and then I just been you know pretty much in it with Corey that entire time through, uh, you know, iterations of the company via acquisitions and and things like that. But it's been the same people in the same room and the same festival for, for my for all I care to mention it since, since that time. So, uh, see, and your story is very similar to my daughter, Grace, who you, who you knew, she worked there at AC, same thing, high school, fell in love, got an internship at AC entertainment, uh, did four years of, uh, working with, uh, James, uh, Chenault there, the volunteers and, and then got married and is doing much better because, you know, she figured out there's nobody getting rich, but 
AC. <laughs> 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 but anyway, Corey, what's your story? Yeah, yeah, we love Grace. It was a blast working with her and getting to know her. Um, yeah, so I, um, I always sang and played music and stuff growing up, um, especially in like middle school and high school. And I was kind of like desperate in high school to find a way to get involved in music because um, I felt like there probably wasn't really a a way to easily, you know, perform or play unless I got really, really good. Um, and I didn't really want to teach. So I found out about, uh, music business programs, um, at Belmont MTSU. And I found out pretty quickly that I was way too poor to go to Belmont. Um, so I went to MTSU (laughs) and it had a, had a great experience there. Um, kind of like DIY shows and played in bands and, you know, did like mini tours and stuff and just kind of like got my feet wet that way. And then. Uh, moved back to Knoxville uh, for an internship at AC um, in the marketing department. Um, but yeah, I was, I, as I like started going to more shows in college and festivals, um, I was definitely kind of drawn to live music. Um, a lot of the curriculum there at MTSU was like label based and like marketing of recordings um, and that kind of stuff. And that, that never really like resonated with me, especially in a space where that was changing so quickly. Um, and you know, some of the stuff they were teaching at that point already felt like it was a little out of touch, um, as everything was sort of going digital and they're still talking about like putting CDs on shelves and target and stuff. Um, but all, all the stuff I did with live was always really interesting. I loved playing shows at the time. Um, you know, even now, like one of the things I talk about a lot is like, I like to go to some of the big, like hyped up shows, um, especially the ones like, a, uh, you know, like a Zach Bryan where it's like super prone to like sing alongs. Like, even if you don't know a lot of the songs and I like to just kind of like hang back and watch the fans and listen to them. Um, and you know, you, you get a pretty big, like dopamine hit, obviously and that happened. Um, I, I think that that's something that, you know, through all my years, that's, that's really the only place you can get that. Um, and it's, it just, it's just super cool to, you know, be involved and help create that space. Um, but yeah, at, at AC, I did, uh, marketing for concerts for quite a while and then started drifting into the festival world and then came on with, uh, C3 a few years back. I'm glad we did this. I mean, my story's similar. I'm older than you guys, but uh, I was at college, had no clue, found out if I, you know, wrote for the paper I, and reviewed concerts, I got free tickets. And if I reviewed <laughs> records, I got free records. And that literally is- I had I, an internet <laughs> blog in college that I used to get free tickets. <laughs> it's amazing. That, that literally led to a 30-something, 30 37-year career and, and including going to Bonnaroo. And, and you know, Russ is, you know, he's with us because he- figured out how to design web pages and do everything else that he does amazingly. So, well, and it got me a free ticket to Bonnaroo and that's kind of how I latched on. Here we Um, are. Yeah, here we are along those same lines. Any advice for somebody maybe in high school or coming out of college looking, they love music, maybe love festivals. Any advice for somebody that would want to break into the, this kind of career field or, you know? Yeah. I, I like to, uh, I like to encourage people to go the DIY route as much as they can in the music space. Um, I think a lot of times when you're in school, you get encouraged to do a lot of internships and, you know, seek out mentors and kind of like, you know, build a network, which you definitely should do. Um, Mm -hmm. But I I think that there's a lot more that you can do by yourself that people are afraid to do sometimes, you know, throw your own show, do a mini festival, um, manage a band when you're in college. Um, try booking a band, you know, I think all of that stuff, like for me, when I'm looking at resumes and interviewing people, uh, to come into the music industry, people that have done that kind of stuff and take an initiative and kind of like built their network that way is usually really impressive to me. And there's, you can like in music, you can even like develop your own company doing that. Like you don't even have to go work for somebody if, if you like latch onto a band and do a good job and it works like 
So it's it's time well spent, I think. And that's that's always my advice. I think that's a little like against the grain method that works pretty well. Brad, I'm, I'm going to let you speak. And then I, we're probably going to say the same thing, but go ahead. Um, I, uh, you know, I talk to a lot of students um, for, throughout the year and we've got the Bonnaroo U program that we've put together and we're moving that to Lollapalooza and trying to get that started at ACL in Austin as well. And something I always tell, you know, that this industry rewards two two people the first group are are the hustlers that Corey's talking about that don't say you know who's going to hire me to manage they say i'm just going to go out and hire myself and, and figure it out and build the skill set that's the first one and then the second group of people are just the people that are curious all the time i tell kids at the end of each session i have they ask they always ask the question what's your advice and it's be curious ask the questions this industry more than any other industry in my opinion of people who will respond to that cold email that they get. Um, I have students all the time send me cold emails, and I think when I respond to them, they're just like, "Wow, I didn't know what I didn't expect to respond, right. so I don't know where to go from here." Like, what am I? What What am I supposed to say now? But right. uh, reach out to people, man. Stalk people on LinkedIn. I mean, I, if if there's a job you want, find someone in that job, find their email. In today's age, it's not hard. No, and reach out, reach out to them. The thing, the thing I always say, and I used to speak at like career days is very similar is, uh, and, and kind of Corey, it, it, it's everything you both have said is, and even Brad, not everybody's a singer. Not everybody's a quarterback. Not everybody's going to be the point guard, but there are so many other jobs in music and football and basketball or whatever. Uh, and, and you guys are proof. I'm proof. You know, I'm like you. I love music, but I can't play the radio. But I found a way to be around it by learning, you know, to getting a job in a newspaper. You guys did the same thing. So that's the advice I always give. And and you're right about the internships. And that's how Grace got into it and you got into it. Just keep volunteer, you know, sweep the floor. It, it, it's easier to do in high school than in college or as a graduate. <laughs> so yeah. start early. Yeah. But anyway, the takeaways, you can't just go to class. Ex- that does not work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. That does not work. No one ever got that job from class. It is. All right. Well, we spent way more on, on this than I intended to, but I think it's important because it is, it establishes a lot of what we talk about on this, uh, this podcast is how much we love this festival and how different it is. It's people who care about the music and Bonnaroo and and festivals and we're fascinated by the sausage making we're fascinated by how you turn a 700 acre farm into the fifth largest city in Tennessee for a week um and so let's let's go um my first question was gonna be how do you guys feel about the lineup Corey, I'll go first if you, if that's cool. Yeah, you take it. You take it first. I feel I feel really great about the lineup, um, Barry. I think that you know Corey and I have been talking a lot about this. Obviously, we've been on the phone a lot over the past couple of days and reading a lot of comments. Some of which we should probably ignore, but we we try to we try to we try to hear out as many people as possible. And um, I, I think that Bonnaroo is. Um, you know, right before this call, Corey and I were talking, it's so weird to have a festival where people go one time and then the next year they decide, I don't even need to wait and see the lineup. I'm going to buy the ticket. That's not something that happens at a Lollapalooza or, or, you know, any, anywhere else. And that's not to say anything bad about other shows we work on that do right. incredible things for the communities and cities that they're in. But it's something very special that needs to be acknowledged with Bonnaroo. And I would never use that as an excuse for something someone might perceive as a mediocre lineup or underwhelming lineup. I think the lineup we have next year is is magical. I think the undercard is stacked. I think we've got two very heavy hitting uh, headliners in Post Malone and Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I think that Fred again is the future of of the headlining space for the space that we're in with Bonnaroo. And people are going to see that as 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 more European festivals announce their lineups for this summer, and um, our job is to be forward thinking and and see what's what what's next and not what's just right now. And I think that 
time to time you we have to be the tastemaker you know we people trust us to be the tastemaker so let us be the tastemaker and so that's kind of my thoughts on next year i think there's a lot of very bonnaroo bookings on the undercard this year with sean paul and guar and all of these things that are little golden gems that you're not going to find at other festivals that are only going to be unique to to mixing in you know, I don't know anywhere else you're going to see Megan the Stallion and Guar on the same lineup. It probably doesn't exist. It, or, it yeah. doesn't exist. Or Jean I mean, Baptiste. That's what I said. Yeah. Somebody asked yeah. me what I yeah. think, and I said I'm never going to see yeah. Jean Baptiste anywhere else but this festival. That and not not yep. just because of who I am. So, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Corey. This lineup's this lineup's the most unique one that I think we've done in a while. Um, it's it's like it's it's had the widest like age and demographic range of my friends who are reaching out to me saying they like it like i've got i've got i've got friends in their early 20s hitting me up loving this lineup i've got buddies in their 40s hitting me up loving this lineup i think it's really got something for everybody and i think it appeals well to you know like the the nerdy music lover and the the person going to experience the general festivities of water like um I think that opening the main stage on Thursday is going to be insane. I don't think people are ready for that. Um, I'm so, so excited about that. That's going to be a one of a kind experience. Um, Pretty Lights' team's already hitting us with some crazy, crazy ideas for some stuff they can do to take that show to the next level. And it is just going to be nuts. And then, you know, I, I know we've got like, like Brad said, we've been reading the comments. We always do. Um, and you know this this one's definitely there's it's it's a lot more of like the this is the best lineup I've ever seen right next to the this lineup's garbage. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. It's, there's a lot more of that than last year. Um, it's it definitely seems like it's a little more polarizing. Um, and you know I know I know some people feel like that Sunday spot is maybe um supposed to be reserved for a legacy act. Um, and it has been in the past. Um, but I, I think we all just want to say like, trust us. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the Fred, the Fred show is uplifting and magical and he's pulling out all the stops from Monteroo and people are going to walk away from that field on Sunday night feeling awesome. And wow. I'm, I'm just so excited for everyone to see that. It's going to be, it's going to be incredible. And if you didn't catch it, it's the only festival in the United States that he's going to play next year. Oh, nice. Didn't know that. He's headlining a bunch of European festivals, and he's headlining Bonnaroo. Nice. For all, to, to go back to your Pretty Lights point, and, and folks, if you're listening, pace yourself. Pace yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> good advice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty lights on it's Thursday really night, advice. man. That's a dangerous, dangerous thing because that Thursday is wide open anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> listen to our point. past episodes. Yeah. Opening up Thursday, the you know the wet stage is going to be yeah, it's going to make for a, a long marathon. So yeah, pace yourself is good advice. Real quick, Russ, just to because you had a day to sleep on it, uh, and. and you know, you, Corey, you said polarizing, and it's, it's. I didn't think of it this way, but I've been reading the post too. It's either love it or hate it. There's not a lot of middle with this one, is there? Yeah. It's kind of weird. No, not that I've seen. Yeah, that's weird. Um, All right, anything else, Russ, you want to talk about this year's lineup before we sort of move? Yeah, in? what do you guys think? Oh, same. I yeah. listened to y'all's podcast yesterday, but it seemed like you guys were still a little bit undecided at that point. Well, yeah, we had just gotten it literally minutes before we hit record, so you re- really got our first impressions. Yeah, we've had about a day or two to sleep on it, and it, it is good. I think, uh, you know, that that 2020 lineup that never happened is kind of like where everybody wants to compare it to, and of course nothing is ever going to compare to that. But yeah, I think the more I dig into it and look underneath the big names, there's a lot on there that, that I am excited about. And yeah, there's stuff on every day. I mean, the, every day is pretty much stacked for me. Yeah, I think it's really, really, really solid. And I said so yesterday. I think the the things I've heard are sort of headliners, you know, maybe not last year or certainly not 2020. I'm a Chili Peppers fan from the beginning. Uh, I saw them when Hello was still alive. I mean, that's how far I go back. Um, you know, 
so I get that, but when you started digging in the Krung bins, the John Baptiste, the Maggie Rogers, it's really, really good. And, and two things you want to be entertained all day, each day, or at least have some options. You know what I mean? You don't want one day to just so overwhelm and the other two are not very good. You want to be entertained the whole time. And, and Brad, trust us. That's, that's what I keep hearing from, which raises other points. The veterans, the people who have been, know it's more than the lineup. It's about the camping. It's about the experience. It's about trusting you guys to know how to build lanes, uh, put together a lineup. It's not about just seeing one favorite act. It's about the whole weekend. Um, and that's what I'm, I'm hearing from people. The other thing is, oh, man, they were just here. What, and I was going to ask you, that was one of my questions. What's the percentage now of like new ticket buyers? Because that's something people forget. Like veterans like us. It's the majority. It, it is the majority. So wow. majority of people have half. not seen. It's well over half, I'll say. Yeah. So the majority of people have not seen Post Malone mm -hmm. on the farm or the Chili Peppers on the farm. or Dude, and Chili Peppers, like, yeah, they played 17. We, a bunch of us got the opportunity to see them at other festivals or shows last year and they sound amazing yeah. with Frusciani. Yeah. And yeah. Worth, yeah. Worth we noting. We have they've to never, have that on the farm. Yeah. Worth noting. They've never played Bonnaroo with Frusciani in the band, yeah. which is, which is yeah. big point. It's, it's, so they sound really, really great right now. Yeah. So uh, all that stuff plays into it. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. I'm, I'm glad that came up. And even if it is, it's not the same band like uh, you know so i heard somebody saying post malone's not the same guy he was a few years ago you know no artist is so I always take that into consideration so it and it's and, and i wrote down you said forward thinking brad that's uh yeah that's so weird people can be that way i know so many people want to hear their favorite band like they remember them in the 70s or the 80s that's not what you guys are about and that's what I've always loved. I don't want to hear a classic rock band doing, you know, their hits. I don't mind hearing a classic rock band, but I want to hear yeah. the progression. So, and I I think the the key to that, Barry, and I was talking to Corey about this earlier, is that if you look back, if you if you talk to OG Bonnaroo fans right now and say, "Give me your top five Bonnaroo years by lineup." And you pull those years out and you look at those years in the context of the year that they happened. We were on the front edge of a lot of right. those artists. Right. And you don't think point. about that now. You, you look and you go, oh, Kanye West or whoever is on the fourth line or third line of this festival. That's a bad example. I don't know why he was the first one that came to mind. But my point <laughs> being, the, my point being, the best Bonnaroo years were ones where we were really saying, trust us. We're, we we want to be the tastemaker. We know where this industry is going. We know what's hot, and we want you to be the first. We want to be the first to show it to you. Well, and it's hard. It, it's easy to forget that when you're looking at a lineup from ten years ago and going, "Oh yeah, obviously this was a good year yeah. because all of these are Grammy winners." But they weren't Grammy winners when they were on the stage. Now I did a, a, a radio interview. They wanted me to call in and talk about Bonnaroo and they were talking about this exact same thing. And I was like, the thing that Bonnaroo has created. Um, and I, st I went to the first one in 02 started going in 07. And we, when we talked to Danny Clinch a couple of weeks ago, we talked about this because he's, he's a huge fan as well. Bonnaroo changed the landscape because before it was around, before it came on, it was a lot of arena rock acts and rap, which was two different things. But the arena shows were just so cookie cutter. It didn't matter if it was country or pop or whatever. You, you knew at the end of third songs, they were going to say hello, you know, Cleveland or whatever. And then they were going to introduce the band at the end of five. And then it was going to be over in 87 minutes. Didn't matter what it was. And it became real. And and the other thing is they did away with festival seating. So everybody had to sit in their assigned seat. There was no more going towards the front of the stage. It was just really dull. So Bonnaroo changed that, but it also changed this idea. And this is my main point is it 
fit. It made it so that you wanted to discover the band that you'd never heard of. My favorite T-shirt I've ever seen there was some kid wearing a shirt that said, "My my favorite band doesn't exist yet," and I thought that sums <laughs> <That's cool>. up <laughs> that sums up Bonnaroo. To your point, it made it so that going and coming back with three or four new bands that you had never heard of is now the goal almost as much as going to see that favorite band that you've never seen. Right. I mean, do you guys, yeah, that, that's my response when people say, Oh, I've never heard of these names on here. I'm like, well, what a great opportunity. You know, you can go and come back with a new favorite artist. You might, yeah. you know, find out. So yeah, I, I think this is a good time. Thing. I think it's a good time also to just give a shout out. Like as we're going through those comments, you know, you're seeing a lot of people who you can tell by sort of reading their, like full comment that maybe it's not their favorite lineup and they're, you know, actively encouraging people who are, you know, voicing their complaints about the lineup to come anyway. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you've got mm-hmm. people that, you know, have been before obviously, um, and understand what it's about. And, you know, I've, I've also read a bunch of stories this week and, you know, seen some stuff online where people are talking about how, the lineup that they liked the least going into the weekend um, ended up being their favorite moderator. Never not great. As our um, friend Ken Weinstein said, it's never not and, great. And I think, I think another thing, you know, that shows that too is, you know, we've, we've had the most successful presale this year um, that we've ever had um, coming out of last year. Oh, um, there's more people who have gone ahead and bought their ticket before the lineup that we've ever had before. Um, so I think, I think that message is really, you know, starting to spread in a big way. Um, and you know, that's, that's always been kind of my, my, my thing. Like I, I was saying, it's like me and my buddies kind of decided pretty early on. It's like, we're going to go every year cause it's going to be awesome. And there's yeah. hundreds of bands. We keep hearing. Yeah. Well, let me go back then to that first early on. I said, I would jump around cause, uh, the fact that. Brad, you said you work with like 30 other festivals. How similar, and we're going to get into the details for you guys that are listening. We're going to get into the, because you guys made some pretty significant changes last year and you sort of continued that. And and that's the main reason we wanted to have you on here. Um, but I want to talk about this other stuff too, because I'm fascinated by it. Um, how similar are those other festivals in that regard because we say all the time the lineup doesn't it matters let's don't kid each other it, it matters but it's becoming less and less significant i think with bonnaroo because of what you just said Corey. It, it's it's the total experience um is can you quantify that in regard to some of these other festivals guys i mean i'll 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 start by saying As a whole, Bonnaroo, within the portfolio of festivals that our company works on and produces in the United States, I think Corey would back me up in saying, we look through Bonnaroo, we look at Bonnaroo and and make decisions on Bonnaroo through a completely different lens than what we think about for any other show that we produce. And it's because of the sentiment and community that's built around the fans of this show that is way more engaged. Whereas you have big city festivals or single genre festivals like a high water that really lean into, I want to get Americana fans to come and they're more passive music fans. They're going to come this year because Noah Khan's there, but next year, if it's my morning jacket, maybe they'll, maybe they'll take the year off. Bonnaroo fans, in my opinion, are always coming until we give them a reason not to. And that is not that is that is the opposite. Okay. Everyone else is not everyone else is not coming to High Water unless we give them a reason to come to High Water. Bonnaroo, I truly think when you come one time, I've got to convince you the next year not to come because <laughs> it is that that's the magic of the experience. And and we we went through a really pivotal time this is something I've spent a lot of time thinking about and I've told Corey my thoughts on this and there's no way to prove it, but you know, I, I think the pandemic, I think 2020, 2021 really masked a time that 
naturally we were having a paradigm shift in the fan base of this festival. And we were going to have to deal with that either way. And we, we kind of got distracted by COVID and the cancellations and the hurricane and all of that. But, you know, we were at a pivotal point where the people that came in 05 and 06 and they saw Dave and they saw widespread and they, and they ch had this festival change their life. This is no longer something that easily fits in their life anymore. And we've now got to pivot to who is that new fan? The guy that was coming to see Widespread in 2006, what is that fan today? Is it the kid that's 18 that's coming to see Fred again? You know, is that who that is? And how are we, how are we catering to that? And so um, I'm kind of rambling a little bit. No, man, you it, are, you're nailing it, it. Please don't stop because you're it, you're it's it's a very it, it's just such a special thing man it's the it's the it's the coolest thing i've ever been able to work on and, and associate myself with and it's unlike anything else we work and i'll let Corey talk i want i want to preempt because i want to i want to comment on that you you know you talked about covid and the hurricane but also that was right smack in the middle of the big shift between ac and and superfly and Live Nation C3, right? So as a fan, um, it felt like, man, this thing is going really, really corporate. And then it felt like people like you two stepped back in and said, don't mess with my festival. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the C3 team also is the best group to do this show. That is not that is not a corporate situation over there. That is a bunch of music lovers with big ideas, just like AC. They just got more festivals. It's super but cool. Am I wrong? And and that's the way I felt. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. You I know what I'm talking sure. about? I, I think uh, I think there's a perception of any time Live Nation's name is brought up that that is the perception, fair. right? They're the death. They're they're the death star. Yeah, they're, they're the, the big hundred percent. Uh, I agree. That's fair. Oh yeah. And the Comcast. I, yeah, but it's important. It's important to it's it's really important. I can't stress this enough. If you if you were to turn my camera around, walk out my door, and walk about thirty feet down the hallway in front of me, you'd walk into Brian Vincent's office, and that's who's booking this show. Yep, friend. And that's who's friend of the he, show. Hillman Steve Hillman Steve Green, right? They're doing all the magic mm -hmm. work, and those were the same guys that did it in nineteen, and they did it in twenty. And they did it before C3 was in the picture and before Live Nation was in the picture. And when somebody like C3 becomes involved, and I, I'm extremely lucky to work for a company like C3 because, like Corey said, there, it's a lot of dreamers and big, and big idea people. And the only thing different now is that those dreamers have access to more resources and yeah. capital to actually do cool, to actually do <laughs> cool stuff. It's pretty sweet. You know? <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. But it – Perception is the is the is the right word. That was the perception, and then in, in the last couple of years, it it felt like whatever shift change there was, and it may just have been a perception, but definitely, um, I'm glad to hear you say that. And Brian mm -hmm. and Stephen, man, they're great. They've done a terrific job. Yeah, right, I, Corey, think the, I interrupted I think the your big answer. Thing too, I think the big thing too with like looking at the perception and stuff. It's you know some of the some of the comments sometimes are. There, uh, it's always great to get feedback from people because we need it. You know, we we spend as many hours as possible out there on the site, but we're not experiencing it in the same way that fans are, and we take all of that to heart. Um, but it it is hard to see those comments sometimes where you know people you know think think it's a big fodder is a big money machine that's just you know gobbling up dollars because it's really just a bunch of like me and brad's in here like trying to make something weird out in, on yeah. a farm in tennessee like, like like yeah it does it does need to make money like we do we do have to you know eventually turn a profit to be able to keep doing it but it's it's there's a there's a lot of liberties that we're allowed to take that yeah aren't necessarily yeah. contributing to the bottom line i had a i had a boss that used to say nobody likes to be told their kid has big ears <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there you go. Um, that's just part one. Part two will be next week. Um, Russ, I mean, I don't think I oversold it. Those guys are fans. They're fans, fans, fans first, right? Completely, yeah. Mm -hmm. They and just happen to have the keys. <laughs> yeah, and they listen. 
<laughs> and they, they listen, listen to other fans. They listen to other fans, and yeah, uh, it's um, it is interesting to see. You can tell it stings a little bit when they hear criticism, but yeah, they do something about it, right? They do uh, if they can, and a lot of times they can. So, you know, keep that in mind that when you make comments like that or you see comments, um, they definitely look at it and respond. And like you said, it, it, it's not always an instant change, but it's something they can work towards. You know, they're, they're looking at long term. Right. Right. And that's a great point. And that's something that I've been saying uh, to you, and, um, especially, um, my goal is to not only go this year, but next year and the next year and the next year. Mm -hmm. And so that's a different mindset in a lot of ways uh, than just how can I take advantage of something this year? You know what I mean? Yes. We won't go too deep into that, but (laughs) yeah, it's just interesting. Um, I think it's a great point and I'm glad you keep making it that they listen because I think that's very important. So. Super important. Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, it's been about a week. Have you digested any more of this lineup? I still think it's really good. Yeah. Um, I, it's funny. Yes. The, uh, I, I think my initial reaction is similar to yours and I don't, I haven't come off of that. The top is, uh, Okay. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You you hear you if you listen to the, listen to Brad and Corey on the uh, the Rubus podcast, they get into it a little deeper. I think we touched on it briefly that this is a tough year for headliners uh, for festivals because we all came out of COVID and those guys were ready to work and now they're ready to take a break. And, yeah, uh, it's just the cycle. It's the cycle. Um, you know, you can't book, uh, there are reasons why a band books when they do and goes out in a festival and those sorts of things. And you can hear that. I won't repeat it, but, um, to your point, I still think that middle, um, that undercard just under the headliners to the middle is pretty doggone strong. Me too. And that's, that's where I'm going to be living most of uh, this year. I think is that, that middle, that's a solid middle. Uh, I had a chance to see Pretty Lights at the Caverns a few months ago, and I wish I'd gone now just to kind of see what it's all about. Uh, yeah. But I am I am curious about some of these because, you know, like you said, they part of their job is to kind of predict the future. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that was a great point. They're, yeah. That was a really, really good point. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. The, they are a future planning festival. They're trying to book bands that are going to be great. Yeah. And they've done that as well as anybody. I think um, so. So if you're not familiar with a band that's you're wondering why they're uh, headlining, uh, yep. just know that there's a reason that, that Bonnaroo picked them and put them where they did. So it's definitely yeah. worth checking out. Yeah. If you're the type that, you know, isn't going to go because you've never heard of somebody on the lineup, you know, whatever, stay home. <laughs> but most of the Bonnaroo fans are the people who are there to discover. That's, that's the other sort of thing that we've kind of realized is that it's a discovery festival. That's it is. the reason you go. And that's part of, right. you know, we've we've shifted a lot from the days of MTV where you would see a music video and that's usually how artists would get discovered by a lot of people was, the you know, major airplay. But uh, now it seems like discovery happens on places like Bonnaroo where you just go and that's yep. where you come back with, you know, a whole list of artists that you want to go home and listen to now. Right. That's my favorite part coming mm-hmm. home with a, coming home with a f- list of brand new favorite acts. Yep. You know, uh, Fred again, I know nothing, but <laughs> listening to those guys, that's going to be an epic, crazy, you know, North American exclusive one time only show. It's going to be big. And so that's cool. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. Not necessarily. I want to see the John Baptiste because where else am I going to see it? I want to see Gore. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to see the ones I'm familiar with, but I want to come back 
and, and, and go, or rather go and see the new act that I've never heard of and be blown away. So me too. Very excited about yeah. that. Speaking of Gore, I saw some of the memes that people are already posting about uh, Gore and uh, about Gorley Ray Jepsen, the crossover we didn't <laughs> know we needed. that's gonna be fun yeah well i'm excited i'm energized again uh somebody my friends keep saying you know are you really going i said yeah i'm i'm pumped up Mm -hmm. as excited as i've been in a long time for this for this particular one and it's partly because of talking to brad and Corey and the lineup but uh just listening to all these other people talk about how excited they are oh yeah all right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, please like, um, you know, hit the hit the like button, share, uh, post a review. Um, thanks to Consequence, and, and we're looking forward to where this takes us. Yep. Who, st- knows. <laughs> who knows? And stay tuned. Next week, we'll have part two out. Consequence Podcast Network.